So I'm sure that there are many questions to both uh, speakers. Um, so um, it is up to you now. Um, okay, so so I, I start by uh, thanking you both for, for great talks, very interesting. Um, I'd like to ask Anat uh, about the question of um, the one who reads what is written on the female sheet, and to um, and, and usually when when we speak about uh, texts and uh, communication, etc. So so we we think more about the. Um, the, uh, the, the, the transmission, right? It's, it's not only the act of writing, it's the question of who is, um, who, who is supposed to read, etc. cetera. Um, and, and then just to, to, to ask you if you can say a little bit more um, about um, um, the, the self-writing that is only to your own eyes in front of the mirror maybe, um, the one that you hide from the world, um, about how this is um, a, a, a pathologized in a way, saying that if you can, even if you can read it, it doesn't have a sense because it was made by someone that is not uh, rational enough because she hurts herself. So it's like, it's, it's a, 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 a failed communication from the beginning. Um, and, and also about uh, who should read the, the, the other uh, writings um, uh, made by, by Ashkar or by those Israeli uh, women sending them to the soldiers. Is it only for the soldiers also creating a community among themselves? Or, okay, so this is one question. And to Ido, um, I think it's, it's more of a comment, but um, uh, I, I thought of, of the book, very recommended book, uh, the Ends of the World by um, Ganovsky and Diveros de Castro. And they say that actually the world has ended many times. Okay, we, we always talk about the end of the world as something that will come one day. But they say uh, in, in, in every colonial encounter, uh, a world has ended. Has ended. It, it has ended for um, uh, people in the uh, Amazonas. It has ended for people in other places because all the images that we have of catastrophes look just like the day after the, uh, the colonial uh, conquest. And, and therefore, I, I can maybe uh, uh, comment or, or ask you about this um, idea of uh, a world that ends many times, and then it's not only towards the doomsday, but otherwise a uh, world that has ended, and now New York just wants to uh, uh, present it to, to others as a world that, uh, yeah, that has ended for them. Um, yeah, thank you both. Um, I thought this was uh, really two wonderful uh, presentations. I, I really enjoyed it a lot and learned a lot. Um, my question to both of you is maybe a bit to move beyond the immediate topic of your talks, and, and I wanted to ask you like what follows from it. And, to Anat, I was wondering if you can say more about because you're focused on, you know, art that works so much with the skin as a as a canvas and trying to reappropriate that from a feminist perspective. How this relates to other forms of um, art or of you know um, the question of writing, um, and it, is there a connection to écriture féminine? So the question of what does it mean to write as a woman? In, that you find in literature, for example. Um, uh, I, I'm thinking of like uh, Chris Krauss's work or Rachel Kaskis' work. So the question to find a voice as a woman in a world that is dominated by people who say the medium of fiction is never a virgin and was touched by many men. And um, so is this specific to these kinds of examples that you used or is it something that you can also do in other medium, in, in a different medium? Um, and to Ido, I, I, I find it all very interesting. And I was, the, the thought that came to me is, but I don't know enough about the situation, but is it maybe, if, when we think about how to connect the climate justice struggle with a broader struggle for justice, um, uh, and also with the Israeli-Palestinian uh, situation, um, would you say that it might be the case that um, 
the Israel-Palestine question has become something of a paradigmatic question because the a doomsday, the, the, the pending doomsday, has showed the, the entirety of the globe that we have to live together on this globe together, that we have to find a, a form of cohabitation that, um, that reduces violence and walls and, 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 and so on. Um, because there is a, um, a horizon of, of destruction, um, is there something that maybe also um, the rest of the world can learn from these kinds of, uh, from these, these kinds of perspectives? Um, I don't know if I make myself clear, but, but the question of cohabitation that I think is at the center of, um, of the struggle against violence um, becomes so much more dramatic when it is seen in the uh, horizon of a, of a coming um, doomsday. Hi, uh, thank you and thank you both for, for your talks. Uh, Anat, just a, a short question to you. Um, the, the third part, the part where you talk about uh, subjugate, um, the third part of them, yes. Um, there is something in there that uh, I think echoes uh, a mimesis of actually a progressive form of, of action, uh, slut walks, uh, other, other ideas, even the language that, uh, that, that was used in the image you, uh, uh, you, you screened here, uh, standing with. And I wonder what's this, this mimetic idea of, of, of other struggles um, that are not necessarily controlled by a patriarchic uh, order. But why is that so? What, do you have anything to say about this, uh, this action? Who are these women? That, are they aware to, to what order they are? They are now um, subjugating their, their bodies in, in this action. of other struggles? Uh, I think it's a very good question. Uh, and I think it does echo other uh, feminist struggles uh, like uh, uh, the uh, walk of sluts and, and like uh, other attempts to reappropriate derogative, um, uh, derogative words turned against women. So it does echo these structures and again, like we've seen uh, in the morning's lectures, there's a, uh, like deciding who's the victim and who's the perpetrator is not is sometimes challenged. However, for me, um, from my perspective, uh, the women taking part in this in this um, uh, Facebook page are more uh, participating in the existing order rather than uh, challenging it. Uh, but it's interesting because we see a lot of like ultra cons conservative uh, struggles using, uh, using uh, post-structuralist tools. So I think this movement is very interesting. So thank you for pointing it out. And Ariel, as for your uh, question about um, who is reading? Uh, I think it's a it's a very interesting question, and and like the question of can we believe the person who is um, pathologized in this way? Uh, so I think there's a nuanced play in the act of, of um, cutting, or generally more generally in the act of uh, non societal self injury. There's like a nuanced play between between um, concealing and exposing. And I think like this is uh, more of, the, maybe even more than the actual words. This play is, is the, like the, the medium is the message. Like this play between hiding and showing is a sort of message on its own. So I th think this me message can go through even when the subject is pathologized. But I do agree with you, and we, and we see that, um, like, this pathologized uh, uh, woman is like the, the papillon in, the, in Los, um, 
uh, turn of the century manifest that 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 we've read some of it like for loss um uh for the papoon to t tattoo his skin and his boat are normal things but for the modern men uh it means he's a criminal so why is that because because in loss perspective there's not there's not uh, a whole subjectivity uh, within the the primitive men so i view this as as equivalent like so like um in the the female uh, body is seen as a legit legitimate substrate so and again this is uh once more that the, the act is the message. The, the, the act of making uh, it is exposing what is there all the time. So, uh, but you have to have like some sort of reading, at least some partial reading. Uh, and for us, we're reading the text about it. We're reading sharp objects. So that's one sort of reading. And another sort of reading is like in the, in the People with NSSI, you always see behaviors of partly covering, partly showing. So, again, that that sort of um, of dialectic is is also a strong part of the of the uh, subverting, uh, and like this is the message on its own. All right, um, thank you for your question. I thought. Want to provoke much more antagonism? Well, yeah, yeah. I'll hear it, and you'll hear them in news. Um, <laughs> I'll be in charge of that. All right, um, Ariel. Thank you for your remarks or questions. Um, I didn't quite uh, think of the temporal exact temporal aspects or formation of this doomsday, um, let's say in comparison to apocalypse or um, you know, catastrophe. I think they have a lot of uh, in common, but they differentiate somewhere. And um, I can agree with you. I don't think this doomsday is uh, a one-time a, a one event. Um, and as I said, it, it is a mostly a discursive, um, well, it's only a discursive um, apparatus or thing. And therefore, it, it is all the time and on the ground, it's like, no, not any time. Um, but yeah, I can agree that it is, um, it's not specifically, oh this, oh, this is it now? All right. We better you know, be careful. Uh, but thank you, I'll get to read it. And for Daniel, um, thank you for your question. I, I, I'm not sure I have the right answers. answer. I have maybe a few points that I didn't point in my, uh, my talk that may, maybe will make sense and help maybe to develop this uh, conversation. Um, the first one is, I missed the, the th because of time limits, I missed the third phase, which is the acceler more uh, uh, stressing the accelerationism and even commodification. Because as you see, if these um, images are circulating more and more, they, they become commodified and more papers publish it. And, and um, in the protest, there are more um, uh, photographers and journalists looking for it. And, but it's not in accelerationism uh, point of view, it's not necessarily a bad thing. The communication because of the um, uh, deterritorialization and reterritorialization, of course. And, um, but, but it's like, it's the easy way out. Because you say, okay, we didn't accelerate enough. Let's see how it goes. Um, I, I think it's a uh, one way to think of it and it's important, but it's also the easy way out. Second, there are other forms of resistance to uh, the Israeli occupation or apartheid. And 
especially to ecological or greenwashing, you can say it in um, different forms of agriculture in um, Sabiron or Samidun. We, talk, we heard the Hafisha with uh, uh, Sabur in, the, in India, and here we have uh, another form of Sab El Sabirin or Samidin that is another, can be seen as another form of um, sticking to the land, sticking to um, old and traditional uh, agriculture forms, and especially when you compare it to um, the Israeli or colonial or imperial uh, ecological footprint, you find out that it's, it's crazy, the difference. And this is to my next point that um, th this resistance, it's a Ari yesterday talked about kind of how to blow out the pipeline. Um, and uh, when you say, okay, I'll, I'll blow up a pipeline because um, the, the, the consequences will be to, to save the environment, though I'm attacking the environment. So if you look at it through this frame of I'm trying to promote indigenous, um, indigenous affinities to environment, to nature, to living, then you say, oh, oh, okay, it might be, but this is another thing. And last one point about the global scale. This is, again, not the answer, but uh, about indigenous um, affinities to land, indigenous uh, forms of living, there is a lot of um, solidarity uh, between Palestine and the Americas and in the Americas of um, re resisting imperial and um, yeah, greenwashing or using the environment. I'll finish here. Thank you both for presenting new chapters in your dissertation. <laughs> I enjoyed it very much and learned a lot. And I will try not to create a context in between you, if I may. Um, but also, you know, to call you back, to invite you to reflect your larger project. So first about the use of images. Indeed, the corpus was the human body, the female body in your, in your lecture, and that in well, the, the burning burnt tires in your, you know, but you use, pho you use pictures, photographs. The very idea, the medium of photography was left, uh, you know, untouched, not yet unreflected in your, in your lecture. And, and for us, even you know, the idea of the image, if not photography itself, Demand and intention. Regarding what a real Twitter is a question of readership. It's not only who read, but who watches the, the gaze in almost initial condition. So it's inviting another media with other you know, different punctum, right? With different attentions and, and ways of reading and, and traditions even. Attention uh, with, with, with its own theory that already reveals also the, the double binding of violence. Shooting, documentation, looking at, the very idea of the camera intervening in the scene, so why to let it be untouched? I mean, in the discourse of violence. Right? Secondly, the, it seems that you both had like, you know, you had to deal with dialectic of violence, right? Uh, in in, in the, the, not only the, the gendered kind of the name of the fathers, the body, or the language of the mother, uh, resistance vis-a-vis -vis the hege more hegemonic, repressive, systematic, structural, state violence, and so on. And you did get very well. But in both cases, it seems to me that it, it's not a third option. It's, it's, ne it's never an, a third alone and not an option. But the way of not, not being captured in this dialectic or too, too analytical kind of discussion. Is it good, is it bad, or progressive, reactionary, already in judgment of? And it came, I think, both touched it when you came, uh, and that almost 
what you know Shirin Ashat made in her own kind of writing to the liturgical text, creating a, di a different kind of reference to traditional violence. And once you know, and you go when when you chose Doom Day, last day, eschatological stage. Where is it? You know, Amud Ashan. You know, it's a column of smoke. It, you know, there is a um, it's a threshold of a certain messianic acceleration. It's, it's not doing more of the same. It's not doing simply against. It's perhaps revealing a, you know, a different stage of violence, that, which not anymore, let's call it the Benjamin mythical, political, it's not, it doesn't matter. And it's not the divine, right? But it, it's a different assembly of power that it seems to be you touch upon it, but then you pull back. See what I mean? It's a pullback in a certain economy of everyday life. Although it's not symbolic alone, right? It's, it's, it's not about ecstasy, but it's revealing another order of power and forces that doesn't need its name, but it seems that you both touch upon it. Right? You see what I mean? That's it. Yes, thanks. I have a question to Anat. <laughs> Thank you very much. In your, you made me think about the, the Russian activist and artist Piotr Pavlensky. You know, he's the one who uh, there was there were controversial um, uh, political political performances about this. Uh, ah, sorry. Yes. He, he aroused a controversial uh, political issues about his nudity and self-mutilation he used in order to protest against uh, Putin uh, edits and politics. My, so my question would be, could you uh, limit the response of an artist to colonialism or to, or to dictatorship or to uh, violating or to violation of human rights to a gender issue. Oh, is there another question or? Hi, uh, thank you both. It was really interesting. Um, for Anat, it may be just a small comment or link. Um, so it was interesting to me that he didn't really go into actual uh, tattooing, permanent choice aesthetic tattoos on women. And uh, it made me think, I just saw a post by a, a tattooist uh, writing about uh, uh, lesbian prison tattoos in the USSR, which are a lot of them composed of words and of phrases and quotes, which I thought was interesting. And I also reread um, Claude Lévi-Strauss' Tristopic, and he quotes a beautiful dialogue there. I can send it to you if you want, between um, um, indigenous people in the Amazonas and missionaries. And they ask the missionaries, why do you not paint yourself? You only become a person once you paint yourself. So maybe there is an act of, of self-sovereignty or subjectivity uh, through the painting of the self that that has to do with also other ontologies. And, and for you, it was really fascinating. I wanted to ask about this doomsday and maybe in a way what, what uh, Professor Shachar asked a bit answered me. Um, because you talked about settler colonial violence and, and it seems to me that perhaps in other settler colonial situations, the struggles or environmental ontologies operate a bit differently. And I'm thinking about uh, Standing Rock, I'm thinking about Alaska, I'm thinking about indigenous people in Australia, um, that the environment plays a different role in the, in the indigenous struggle against the settler colonies or the settler colonial regime. And I thought about, do you maybe locate something specific about here, um, about the theology, about the environment of here, about the geopolitical situation of here that produces this doomsday? Because I don't think every settler colonial situation summons this, this doomsday economy that I thought was a beautiful uh, frame to think through. So, okay. Hi, the 
little common common um i just think that what is like um to have both in common is the tension between creating and destroying it's like the creating the self creating the body by destroying it creating the billion or something like that, but or creating the world by destroying it, the atmosphere by destroying it. And I think it relates to what Ariel said about um, the reader, because the tension of this, of creating and destroying, of birth and death, like to your birth by suicide, um, it makes it really hard to um, locate the reader. All this um, dynamics between the actor or the presenter or the, uh, the storyteller and the reader, all this limits is, is really throwing it up. Let's, uh, um, okay, first one. Yeah, it, it's, it's just to, to, to follow uh, um, Galili's comments and, and all of the discussion here. I, I think that, that one issue that, that was very significant in both of your talks is um, the issue of time. And the issue of time in the sense of a, an attempt to a, get into a decision, like decide what is going on with us, okay? It's the, the, the difference between colonialism and settler colonialism, one of the differences is the settler colonialism doesn't have an end, okay? We don't have decolonization. And the issue with a, with a, a, a gendered post-trauma is that the post-trauma is a trauma by itself, okay? And it's continuous. And, and I think that, that some of these, um, uh, these acts that you were describing are a, a way of a decisionism, like let's do something violent to put an end to something, to, to, to a, a make something concrete for all of you to see to that something is happening here. So it's like coming to the end of times in a way in order to open a new time. Thank you. Okay, so many questions and comments we, we, we've had, so Anat, do you want to start? Yeah, I, I will try my best. <laughs> uh, so thank you for the richness of the discussion, really interesting questions. Uh, so I would like to address, Kalini, some of your points and also Danielle's points from the previous session. Uh, uh, Daniel, you, you asked something about the reappropriation of the skin and uh, uh, doing that over other mediums of, or other genres. And Galilee, you talked about specifically the medium of, of uh, photography. Um, so I think what's interesting for me in the, in the case of, of shop objects is the um, uh, use of a certain medium to, uh, to do something that is innately impossible in that medium. Uh, to shout with something visual, if you think of Munch's uh, uh, famous painting. So the painting shouts, but you cannot hear the, the shout because it's, it tries to do something in, the, in an audio medium that is actually visual. So I think there's, the, there's something performative in this impossibility. Um, uh, and... Uh, as for the uh, liturgic text aspect, I think it is a liturgic text. I think, I mean, like the, uh, maybe all of the acts that I've, I, um, uh, I've shown. Uh, and I think what makes it a liturgic text is uh, it being a life form. For, and, and, and I did speak a bit about the medium, like in Anissa Ashkarim, the difference between the, the performance and the, and, the, and the photograph. So like 
a life form in a, in a Wittgenstein sense. Uh, something you not only you not just read but you live by or you live with so in the case of, of, of sharp objects and the, and the etched body the body that uh, you you cannot uh, it's not a separate layer it's not the text is always there you cannot uh, you cannot be without it you can maybe conceal it but uh, in some senses, this is uh, close to the discussion on race, where you cannot be, where some races are uh, like uh, transparent, while uh, race is something. Well, other others uh, are marked and and um, as as uh, like non-subjects. Um, Yes. So I think yeah yes the liturgic uh, perspective is is uh, is very interesting and I think it is uh, there. Uh, and also there was uh, also another point about about photography and like shooting. Uh, so in the case of a self portrait or a selfie, it's shooting oneself. So it goes back to the to the point of self violent, which has uh, come up in some of the discussions here. So I think this is an interesting uh, way of, of thinking about this, and I think it is like in the case of of, of the Facebook page, it is self violent of like subjugating oneself, like I called it. Uh, in the case of, of, of the act of right of uh, cutting, it's more it's more complex. It's more dialectic because it's like like uh, in Val said, it's like creating and destroying, or uh, violating one's own boundaries to define to defend the boundaries, or to deflect to deflect violence. Um, okay, I will I will stay with that. Thank you. Um, thank you for your questions, which made uh, in remarks, which they make sense a lot uh, together, even more. I I cannot answer it all. I'll give small answers and maybe one last thing. Um, Galili, um, I, I yeah, you're right, and <laughs> but also, firstly, uh, firstly, and at the same time, th these are. For us now here, it's true. It, th those are images, and we can ask about what does it, what did I do, and what violence did I inflict it? How did I? It's true, and I should ask it as well about uh, the photographing of these um, practices. Uh, but it signals on the ground. There are, let's say, in the um, in the example of Beta, it's the, the settlers there. The, the um, the IDF is there, or Mishmarg, or whoever, and and on the streets, on Hawara or or wherever, it it stays there. It, it's the, it's not only the images. It stays on people's bodies. It stays on the roads. It goes. It has, of course, a liturgical um, aspect to it. it. It's it's textual, but it's yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's tattooed, it's really black and doesn't get off. And and um, the smoke rises above, you can see it um, probably in Beta, you can see it from Ariel, which is um, 20 minutes right, let's say. So it, it also has the really local aspect of it, but nonetheless, you're right. And um, it's right tries to bring it to an end. And I think this is part of the accelerationism uh, aspect, which tries to bring um, a process to an end, or at least change it with, um, um, how you say it? Uh, anyway, speeding and uh, inten uh, yeah, intensive. Whatever. But, but but it it is of bringing something to an end, but it connects when you think of the 
Another aspect, which is the Messianica, Messianic, thank you very much. The Messianic aspect, which is to, okay, bring the things to an end. You're over on right. Uh, to Mbal, right? Um, you're totally right. It's very interesting also with the connection I thought of it uh, earlier that really connects the two uh, papers. But I'm also thinking of it through uh, Achille Mbembe a bit when he talks about it's not that he, he's, uh, you know, it's not his idea, but he writes it uh, really nicely about when he talks about suicide bombing, which is a topic that we had yesterday. He writes uh, about this topic, resistance and self-destruction are largely, largely synonymous in this case. So here as well, it's a different thing. It's not a suicide bombing. It, it doesn't directly um, kill. I, if it um, hurt someone, probably it hurt Palestinians who burn the tires and are closed and uh, breathe the toxins more. But nonetheless, yes, it's very interesting. And yeah, you, you're right. Thank you for your comments. And I see how it's connected. And I'll work on it. OK, so I think that we are just on time to, to end this uh, wonderful session and a uh, very stimulating one. And thank you very much for the discussion as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.